Welcome guys with another reaction with the toxic channel. Uh, as I said before, we do Andrew, we did Andrew Tate and I I'm gonna post it before this video and we have other video of Andrew Tate coming uh, when he make an interview with the Romanian television and he have another interview I think with more Bob Moore or something I, I don't remember the names but I'm gonna do it anyway as much as they keep doing interview we keep doing them because every time we take some notes so even if you, some people doesn't like it but uh, he gives good notes he gives good notes and uh, so as much as you can take information from him I recommend you to take so this one is Tra Tristan Tate with Fresh and Fit so it's a new podcast they made it they make uh, Andrew first and then Tristan so we're gonna see before we check it guys make sure to check the stores I have cool design there as I said it before in all video I'm gonna drop it in the link in this in the description you can check the store purchase something as a support for us and I will sh show you the video what we have as design and we have out of this paradise I'm talking syncopated breathing love So couple design you can uh, you can check it and take a look in it so let's dig in guys you know and it's very interesting Tristan, because you know they canceled you right and it's like you didn't do nothing it's like what the hell did like why are they like yeah you didn't say anything crazy and no. i always find it interesting how they're like oh yeah tristan's canceled off everywhere i'm like what okay, did he do give me a like, show me something that he said that was like super offensive or whatever and it's like they can't point to that's it. the thing that it, it's nothing <laughs> but when the media says trista tate dangerous misogynist tate brothers are dangerous misogynists people assume i've been like preaching hate against women or yeah. the death of people i've literally did nothing yeah i got banned from instagram my instagram is a simple formula it was me wearing suits posting pictures in my car yeah. with quotes that I didn't even write quotes from books and shit I like I'd write them down as I heard them and use them as my so there's not even an original word I even said on Instagram and I got banned but well, we'll see they might reinstate me once this is all over Tristan we've known you for what five years now yeah a long time you're a charming nice guy that just is polite to women super calm I mean what do you do wrong bro nothing it's crazy it, but that's the way the world is you're 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 guilty until proven not guilty mm. and even then you're still guilty in the eyes of my haters when the, if this case gets dropped I'm, there's still going to be people saying that I'm guilty of all yeah yeah Crap. and that will never go away so unfortunately in this world where it should be yeah to be honest with you uh, Andrew Tate when he get banned you understand like uh, he was uh, preaching against something much bigger than him and uh, but the, the the crazy part of our about it is like when Tristan get banned is like uh, I, ha I had his Instagram and so I was I was going to check like for example he posted uh, some uh, cars and stuff so I was checking the cars that he posts and stuff like this and I didn't find anything so that's what i'm saying like that's what he posts he didn't say anything i mean any kind of sexual criminal should be in jail for a very long time they should get the harshest of sentences yeah but i think before you're convicted of anything they protect the people who make the accusations russell yeah. brand's got a bunch of accusers no one knows who they are yeah no one knows who these imaginary people are let's say that, that even they're they're real i'm saying imaginary because i think it's just a pure fucking fabricated matrix attack At this How, point, yeah. Yeah, however um, why not protect his name until he's found guilty of something? Mm -hmm. How dare you say someone is... Because in any other realm, if you're not using the legal system, if I am not using the legal system and I'm just randomly making horrible allegations, if I said you're a rapist or you're a child molester, mm -hmm. out of nowhere, that's defamation. You could sue me. Yeah. I can't do that. Yeah. However, if I legally make a complaint and say this person touched me inappropriately, you're, a you're, you're calling him a sexual predator, you're calling him a sexual criminal, yeah. but because you've involved the legal system, you could say that and the headlines can run it as much as they like yep. for years until that person's finally exonerated. And they don't even run it when they're an exonerator. No, when they're, no, when they exonerate that, bro, when the, when the case is dropped against me, it's going to be amazing how underwhelming the media coverage is. Of course. Yeah, oh, case dismissed due to lack of evidence. One day. One day. But there's been an article every single day for the last one year and ten months that I'm so, some sort of sexual criminal. The day that it gets dropped, mm -hmm. they're going to very loosely mention it at all. 
X is, and Rumble are going to be the only places where people are talking about it. You know, and yeah. it's interesting, too, because the day that you guys got picked up, we talked about this on our podcast, and a lot of people don't know this. One of Epstein's um, people that was paying the hush money, mm. she got tagged up uh, down, in, down, down in the Caribbean somewhere. And if you search anything with trafficking or anything else like that, what comes up? My Tate. face. Not, not the Epstein situation. Yes, exactly. That's right, weird, right? That's so, well, it's a very cool. Yeah, crazy that's crazy, though. That the woman that's paying off all the victims in the Caribbean, but in Epstein's island, uh, she gets tagged up and no one knows about it. Conspiracy. Still no, one still no one knows. Yeah. yeah. There's a line from that movie I, I like, V for Vendetta. He says, there is no coincidence, only the illusion of coincidence. Mm. Yeah. So everyone's like, oh, isn't that spooky? I'm like, well, no. Yeah. No, I've been in Romania for like weeks before that. They could have gotten me any day. Yeah, yeah. But that day. <laughs> yeah, that particular that, that day. That particular day. They yeah. waited for that it, particular it day. Planned. Yeah. It was planned. Oh, they, like, what the fuck, man? I'm, I'm saying nothing. Of course it was a coincidence. Of course. I mean, yeah. Of course. The, the day that, you know, the world's biggest human trafficking rings financer gets, you know, outed that when you Google human trafficking, only my face comes up. Yeah. And I've never done shit to anyone illegal and, ever and this so. came out very interesting because like you know you've kind of and this is this goes to show the the brotherly love between you and andrew and how close you guys are this came out during the pbd interview because i watched both and you guys did both the defense mm -hmm. job it was awesome yes um that like they kind of just dragged you in as collateral damage like they didn't really have anything on you until like later on like they just like just brought you in and said oh yeah well, you know well, well to give you the maximum number of so the rules here is they can hold you in jail without I trouble. think uh, we all know that Christian uh, went to jail because his brother of Andrew Tate so whatever and both of them um, and Andrew was saying like about things about uh, that he's Tristan uh, have my back and stuff like this as a real brotherhood so so they said okay it's all laying up you going together we don't give a fuck that's how it wow. went for up to if they pull the right aikido half of the maximum sentence of what you've been accused of so me and andrew could have been in jail for 14 12 13 14 years without a trial and they could have just dropped it then so that's what i believe the goal was thankfully judges saved me judges everyone talks about the romanian judicial system no no no. you can talk all you like about the police the way that they've conducted themselves and a lot of bad stuff is going to come out in the future when this is all crystal clear and people can see what happened but the judges are the ones who saved me mm -hmm. some judge looked at this and went nah let him go yeah and and the, the the people in charge of doing this to be were furious when that happened but the judges you know work sort of on their own so it was the judges who saved me but uh essentially it's um adding extra criminal charges just added time they could hold me without a trial so they've added a, a very interesting criminal charge called Forming an organized criminal group. Oh. You've probably heard this. Yes. Yeah. Do you know how many people you need minimum to form an organized criminal group by Romanian law? Four. Mm -hmm. You need four people. Mm -hmm. The my assistant, of course, does everything with me and Andrew ask her to. Pays invoices, books, flights, all the normal legal stuff any assistant does. So of course they dragged her in. Of course. The the, the second girl they dragged in, Andrew doesn't even know her. Wow. To this, to this day, I don't think they've ever had a conversation. That's crazy. He didn't even know her name. And they've dragged her in, and this is an organized criminal group because they thought, well, Tristan knows this girl a bit, and Georgiana knows this girl a bit. So if we drag her in, maybe she'll roll on him and flip and become a prosecution witness if we put her in jail and essentially state sanctioned torture this girl until she flips. Uh, she didn't, obviously, because she'd have to lie to say I did anything illegal. But yeah, they needed four people for an organized criminal group. So maybe that's why they dragged me in. Maybe that's why they dragged her in. I don't know, but. I also don't. I also don't care. Yeah. Like, I also don't care. But I'm pretty sure Andrew is the target of all the attacks that are gonna come in the future. And this one, it's Andrew they want in jail. Yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy how um, you know, and obviously you've been there resilient right by his side. But it's crazy like how you've kind of dealt with all the consequences, even though like you've never really done anything. It's just you know, it's like the Instagram getting taken down. Literally, yeah. Posting pictures of you in suits. Yes. With, you know, looking like James Bond and, you know, getting all the chicks. And it's like, oh, yeah, let's take his Instagram down. Uh, YouTube. You didn't do anything on there. Well, let's just get take down all his YouTube and everything so, else like that. It's like, what the fuck, man? You know, I can take... I'll take a second to defend Mark Zuckerberg's decision. <laughs> I, I really will. Really? I really will. Okay. I'll, tell, I'll tell you why. I'll tell All you right. why. Because obviously my mass cancellation was orchestrated at the highest levels. I got banned from banks, uh, you know, apps like Revolution. And it was like locked all on my money. Yeah. All I want Uber, Airbnb. I got the same cancellation treatment Andrew got. However, to defend Mark Zuckerberg's decision, 
if someone is accused of human trafficking, which governments have accused me of for the sake of trying to put me in jail, trying to shut me up, and it's a complete matrix attack, I don't know Mark. I've never met him. Mm. Okay, this guy's on your platform. He's accused of human trafficking. I can defend his decision to take me down under the circumstance that when this shit gets dropped, he puts me back up. Boom. Okay. okay. If That's this fair. gets dropped and I'm not back up in a week or two, then clearly he's he's just a dork who sold out to the Matrix who does anything they say. But, and I don't think he will put me back Wait, because Instagram got taken down when... when yes, the, when, when I was in jail. Out. See, okay. so does that make sense? So I'm yeah. not mad really about losing my Instagram. And also, life's better without Instagram. It's yeah. the number one most deleted app of last year. Bro, really? Bro, I feel great with no Instagram. Life's amazing. I don't yeah. need Instagram anymore. I don't want Instagram. However, well, there's other benefits. I don't know if you want to say. It's up to you if you want to say. Uh, I mean, there are, um, there are other benefits, but, you know, at my level, do I really need Instagram? No. Do I really nah, need Instagram? No, 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 no. I don't need Instagram. But, um, yeah, it's the best dating app in the world. Let's just say that. <laughs> we told y'all guys, man. Yeah. Told you guys. Number, number one. Number one. But uh, I, don't, I don't need it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so, Tristan, as a guy of means, a man of means, and a man of stature, you dress for every occasion very well always dapper thank you suits i try tailored to point as a guy coming up in this world of chaos how does one start on a path of james bonnery <laughs> well you know what it's not i i've always liked suits because i come from london and suits were always the the sign of someone with money yeah i worked in london doing crappy jobs i've worked as a security guard at london nightclubs and a really nicely made suit you could tell you could tell it could be plain black. You could tell if a suit is really nicely made. And in London, that's the I guess the sign of having money and having status. And I was aspired to dress this way. Uh, I certainly don't recommend it for everybody. If you've come from the rural South and you know from a cowboy town, I don't suggest you wear British fashioned tailored suits because you'll stand out. Actually, matter of fact, I got something to show you. Keep going. Keep no, because you'll stand out and you'll try too much <laughs> to be someone who you're not. Mm. I think it fits my personality profile. It fits who I am. It's in fitting with the kind of character who I am. But, um, yeah, dressing well is, I think it's a lost art. I was saying this about the... Um, Inspired by you, man. Yeah. Friend. Oh, very cool. Inspired by you. Very cool. Actually, uh, yeah. Shooter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shooter hooked me up with this, and it's a, uh, pretty much look like Tristan yeah, here. Now, cool. show the that's how you get the hose. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, can show, I, I can show the... Uh, here, let me see here. No, that's not how you get the hose, Myron. You're wrong. There, there you go, right? <laughs> this, is, this is how you get... This is how you get the ladies. Uh, uh, okay, not the hose. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I mean, you, you get the hose, too. You get the hose, too. But the, okay. the ladies <laughs> become available to you, you know? The women who play violin and orchestras and shit, they'll talk to you. So yeah, I you get the ladies, not the the jackets and stuff like that people say yeah. do you even have other clothes i do guys i do yeah. i do you know it's i did a little photo shoot and everything else like that shout out to tristan yeah so, so there's, yeah. No, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with dressing well deception is a prerequisite to your enslavement to truly resist the slave mind join my completely free email list I made a point about, and I don't know if we should. Yeah, yeah, fuck it, let's go down there. Let's go, let's, let's go. go. I actually made a point about the Black Lives Whoa, Matter protests. Uh -oh. So the Black Lives Matter protests, I was making a very valid point. I pulled up an image to a friend of mine, uh, and I showed the Million Man marches when Martin Luther King was, was obviously campaigning for civil rights. And all these motherfuckers who were broke, by the way, mm -hmm. they were broke. They couldn't go into white areas, they couldn't vote. They were flat broke. You look at the men in those marches, Fucking nice white shirts, some right. under belts, hats, nice pants, leather shoes. Yep. And they're dressed very, very well. And they're trying to make their point. Like, I deserve the same rights as you. And they're trying to make their point. But when you have people, whether it be the LGBTQ rioters, let's call them what they are, or the Black Lives Matter rioters, dressed like criminals with their masks on or wearing fucking, I, I put a post out that some people found offensive. I thought it was pretty funny. I said, uh, if Martin Luther King had been running his marches wearing a thong and a, and a, and a rainbow <laughs> bikini top, then he wouldn't have been take it seriously either we'd, yeah. have to, we'd have no civil yeah. rights so like <laughs> dressing like someone worthy of respect is is step one of being viewed as someone worthy of respect and some we've lost it from the 1960s 70s to today somehow it's yeah like he's saying in Nigeria we have an expression we said I will, not, I will try to say it you know, we try to translate it in English he says uh, your clothing lift you up before you you talk because when you enter to the room and you're well dressed when they see you, they, they, they think high of you. And then when you sit down, now it's come to your, what you're going to go out of your mouth. So, yeah, but, be, but before you sit down, your clothes lift you up to a, to a level. And then when you sit down and talk, then they're going to judge you by your, what you're going to say. It's gone away. 
And that's I a feel fantastic like I'm helping point. bring it back. And I will say this real quick. If you go back and you look at the mobsters right back in the 1930s during the Prohibition era, et cetera, uh -huh. you know, the feds are over here arresting mafia guys, whatever. You couldn't tell who the criminals were unless the guy had his hands behind his back because they were all wearing suits and they're all well dressed. Exactly. The mob guys dressed well. Yeah. Now the bureau agents dressed well too. They were wearing suits and they were wearing suits and it was like, oh, who's the criminal here? What the hell's going on? Now you got your pants down by your knees, literally. Your dick and your ass hanging out. You're wearing <laughs> a, a baggy sports jersey. You could see the bulge from the gun. Some food. Like, like, of course, of course, they're going to search you. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is a very fa famous point. I'm not going to say uh, who it was, but back when my dad was alive, we were in the United States. And someone who I'm kind of close to, I used to know very well back then, was complaining to my dad, being like, yeah, man, they're always pulling me over because, you know, they're profiling me. They're profiling me. They're always pulling me over. The pigs are always pulling me over. And my dad looked at him and said, you are, in fact, a drug dealer. <laughs> That's what you are. <laughs> you can't get mad that they think you're a drug dealer and they search you because yeah. that's what your job is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously they're not profiling you. They're just correct. Yeah. Shut the fuck up and pull up your pants. Yeah. So my dad looked at this and I was like, oh, that's a very fair point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, true. crazy. Tristan, can you outlist at least three points of the benefit of dressing properly? Because I feel for like for guys, yeah. they just go on dates randomly. They go to job interviews, not dressed very well. And they, why didn't they get this job? Why didn't they get, get this Girl. As I said in the, in the early video that we did with Andrew, they say that Tristan he doesn't speak like uh, about Andrew speak about the, the the Matrix and all this kind of things. He speak uh, fashion. He change it all the time. He have really he he completely the opposite of Andrew Tate. He's really completely the opposite. What's happening to me? Uh, three benefits. The number one benefit is how you feel in and of yourself. It's not actually the outside perception you have. Mm. I will walk around the city occasionally if I just finished training in sweatpants and, you know, sneakers or whatever. And I know people know me, but let's even talk three, four years ago when maybe I wasn't so well known, but I was still dressing very well in my in, in my free time. Uh, it, it's how you feel in and of yourself. You know, if I saw a beautiful woman sitting there at the mall sipping a coffee and I was dressed in, you know, my beard was all messy. I had a hood up and I was in like sweatpants and shit the confidence less you, you haven't maximized your own confidence yeah, when you, you, you know what i'm when saying you, yeah, when, yeah when you're dressed sure. really really well you just had a fresh haircut you know you feel like a different person so it's how it makes you feel first and foremost like you could do anything you put on a good suit it's the same reason i mean this and this is universal across human nature this isn't something specific to men no it's, it's exactly, psychologically it's specific to women as well it's every single person in the world Women will do their makeup and do their hair and put on a nice dress. And then their personality, you, you'll know when you hang out with them, seems different. Mm -hmm. They're more full of their confidence. They're more their, their natural self. Um, but definitely it's perception as well. People take you more seriously. People are more likely to stop and listen to what you have to say. You know, if you're dressed like a homeless person and you try and dis disturb someone when they're walking past you, they think you want a dollar. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you this, though, bro. When I get a haircut, bro. I feel like I'd say anybody's girl. No cap. Mm -hmm. Except yours. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I don't know. Just don't try. Do me a favor and don't try. Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> you saw how happened today. I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So, uh, confidence. So yeah, so, yeah, the confidence and then what else? Um... So it's the confidence. It's obviously how you're perceived, how you're perceived by others. Mm -hmm. uh, people are much more likely to listen to what you have to say. And also makes you more memorable. Mm -hmm. Also makes you more memorable. a lot of guys don't dress yeah. up. Keep in mind, because you go for a job interview, you have to understand, even if you just wore a before. basic kind of shirt from a store and some pants and some shoes and you think you're dressed nice, that's like the standard issue job interview uniform. You know, the guy who's doing the job interview, I know it's special to you. I know you've prepared. I know you think, oh, fuck, I really need to get this job. He's seen 40 people today, 50 yeah. people today. Who was the guy in the really nice suit? That stands out, you know? So also, st it burns you into people's minds and memories much more. Yeah. Uh, when people say when people say the word Tristan Tate, oh yeah, he always wears nice suits. Yeah. It's something that I'm affiliated with. My tailor shop has been open for 170 Matter of fact, years. When, when I did my photo shoot, the guy that I did the photo shoot wa with, I, I, he, did, he didn't know how cool we were. Uh, he was like, yo, we need the Tristan Tate look. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm already ahead of here. I got some suits mm -hmm. and everything else like that. A good friend of mine, they're like, oh, shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, they're like, yeah, this is, because here's the thing, too, because they pulled women on this as well. <laughs> and they, when they pulled women, yeah. they asked them, that, you know, they showed them separate looks. Universally, business always did the best. I bet it did. Yeah. Every single time. You got a shirt, you got a, you know, a jacket on, a shirt, a nice shirt. Whether it's tie or not is, is not that big of a it deal. Depends on your but style. But basically, business, business casual always did the best well and always. also, and also it, it people do know that nice suits aren't cheap either people yeah. do know it is a status thing as much as a nice car or a nice watch people know that a good suit can cost you know 
upwards of five grand, up to 30, 40, 50 grand yeah. for a really nice suit. Yep. So, you know, it, it's a status thing, just like a nice watch or anything. A else. huge, huge status. Yeah. You know, I said this to, I said this to a, a girl I know very recently. She got mad at me because, you know, women have, women have, I don't want to sound too much like my brother, but women have a propensity to be irrational sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> let's just, let's just leave it at that. No. So, <laughs> I she, love that. So she asked me the stupid question. She goes, oh, do I look better with make, makeup or no makeup? I said, with makeup, yeah. of course, you look, you look much better with makeup. She went, oh, that's a bit mean. And I said, whoa, 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 why the fuck do you wear it? Why do you put it on? If you don't yeah. think it makes you look better and you don't yeah. think it makes you look nicer, why do you spend an hour doing it before I take you fucking anywhere? Yeah. Of course you know it makes you look better. And I was giving the example saying, if you ask me, if I said to you, hey, do I look better in my underwear and sweatpants or, well, it depends, maybe she likes my shirt off, but, or, or a nice suit. Of course they're going to say nice suit, and there's nothing wrong with that because yeah. people like effort. Yeah. People yeah. like effort. Yeah. That's what I like in women, and women like exactly the same shit in men. Yeah. So that's not lies. So yeah. yeah, I like to dress well, and I think we should bring it back. And actually, that's one of my favorite things about the world and the change I think I'm making. The number of pictures I get of dudes who bought their first suit who are like, yeah, I'm wearing a suit to school. I'm wearing a suit to high school. I'm like, you know what? Good. Good, because I'm sick of everyone looking like fucking bums, especially, no offense, in the fucking United States. Yeah. No, 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 now I'm pissed. Right. <laughs> yeah. I was in Vegas. Let's go. I was in Vegas about four and a half years ago. I remember and this let me story. Tell you something. When you are dressed very well, you aren't in a place, you become the place. You mm. become part of the ambiance of the place. Mm -hmm. Let's say you take the fanciest restaurant you could think of. Imagine a very fancy restaurant, right? And you walk in there and everyone's in fucking beach shorts and Crocs and baseball t-shirts. It ruins the ambiance of the restaurants. You're also doing your part to add to the aesthetics of yeah. a nice location. So if you go somewhere like Monaco to the casino, you can't get in wearing a baseball shirt and Crocs. They won't yeah. let you in. Yeah. doesn't matter how much money you have. Yeah. But you go there, dress like me, or I'd probably dress better than this. If I went to the casino, I'd be bow tied up and everything. You, I'm adding to the aesthetic of the place by just being a man in a $30,000 tuxedo standing by the bar sipping drinks. I'm adding to the place. Whereas if you go somewhere looking for a bum, like looking like a bum. You know what? But what I like about him, I one day um, I shared on TikTok and, and shared on TikTok one of his speech and they, he, uh, they, they took it off. I, I didn't get it why, but it was a long time ago. And he says uh, to be able to look really good in a suit, you need to be in shape. And that's really the case because he will not look uh, such as really good on suits if he wasn't that jacked. That's true, though. You're subtracting we need to be looking. from the aesthetics of a beautiful place. So I was in Vegas. Um, <laughs> it was around about the time that COVID first. Yeah, and it's true. I also like suits. I like to wear suits. I have different. I have different suit. Not suits like that, but I have classic clothing. But they, they don't go well. And um, I buy them like as much uh, how it's called. I buy them too much slim, like because if I buy them a little bit larger, it, it will not fit me anyway. Because I'm not that jacked. I'm not even jacked. I'm not that. I don't see myself. Vegas like. wasn't that strict. They wanted everyone gambling and shit. So I'm at the, the table. They moved me up to a higher rollers table. So I'm on this little platform in the middle. I'm playing triple zero roulette and I'm fucking up. I ended up walking away with like sixty thousand dollars. Damn. So I don't know how. I was drunk as fuck. I was with some Russian girl who's next to me who I'd met on some dating app, I guess, in Vegas. Can't remember her name. Sorry, baby, you're <laughs> watching. I, of course I remember. I just don't want to out you on the internet. <laughs> so uh, anyway, long story short, I'm fucking gambling, throwing down about one or two thousand dollars everything, every single spin. You know, winning. Uh, uh, you know, three, four, five, six thousand if I if I won, and this dude comes up. Yeah, man, this is where the high rollers are. Let's gamble. Fucking, I see a massive wad of cash hit the middle of the table. I turn to my right. This fucker is wearing a fucking baseball cap, some t-shirt looks like it had stains on it. He's got this big fat gut, oh. uh, cargo shorts, oh. sandals, and socks. And I'm like, I and guess. I'm like, this guy clearly has money i mean he just threw down 10 20 g's to gamble with he clearly has money why the fuck is he dressed like that mm. and it's uniquely an american problem you go to russia you go to eastern europe that doesn't happen it's mm. it's uniquely an american problem when people it's like, true i was living in eastern europe you will not see this kind of thing especially when they go even a simple restaurant they're gonna be fucking like really looking good they don't go like uh, you see them in shorts or fucking baggy jeans or stuff like this i i, I don't know I, I saw this this kind of style only in the west you know when I came to the West, I started seeing this. They don't care how to go to the restaurant. Just they can wear a pink shirt and a black shirt, and they don't care at all. But when I was in Eastern Europe, it's different. The fashion is really high. Even though you say you think that Eastern Europe doesn't have money, 
think again if you was living in Kiev like I, what I was you will think again they have a lot of money and even when I was going to even small coffee shops like small coffee shops they when you enter they are all uh, in the women are all the women's uh, especially the women they are all like um, looking classic they're looking fashionable you know and, and uh, the man is not such 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 high there but in all cases when you go to much higher like to go to a restaurant this is a coffee shop but when you go to a restaurant you find the man with the suits and stuff like this but uh, well, coffee shops no i don't think like oh well, i'm worth so much money i don't need to dress well well wait, you don't but i think you're a dick and you look like a dick and that russian girl who i was with i was with didn't want to suck your dick <laughs> why the fuck are you doing that to yourself yeah. dress nice and become part of the event yeah become part of the ambiance of the high rollers table yeah. of vegas i took my winnings and fucking left i didn't want to stand next to the dude yeah so you ruin it for everyone else yeah by thinking you could just rock up looking like a bum you ruin it for everyone else and if enough people do that everything gets shit yeah clubs would get shit restaurants would get shit everything would get shit if everyone stopped putting in the effort and I also want to let the audience know you don't have to spend a bunch of money guys to get a nice suit man you, um, you know I think uh, and Tristan will probably agree with me on this you're better off getting a cheap suit that's well tailored than getting an expensive suit that isn't tailored Bro, mm -hmm. buy a suit one size too big and have your basic local tailor cut in the sides, cut in the legs, make sure the legs are the proper length. Make sure that when you when you when you hold your arm up, your shirt comes out about an inch longer than your sleeve jacket. It's very simple stuff. And you can get a really you can get a good suit for three, four, five hundred dollars if you go to Hugo Boss or something. But you yeah. can get much cheaper than that. And if it fits you well and you're in decent shape. That, Even H and M, I, I mean, think has. We're in America. You can go yeah. to Zara, H and M. Yeah, they do yeah. good. They yeah. do for Bro, shit, and, and, and they're good tailored. suits. Yeah. And if you and if you're in decent shape, that's the key. Mm. If you, you gotta work, be in shape. If yep. you are, it's like t-shirts. It's like t-shirts. You wear a plain black t-shirt and you're in good shape versus wearing a Versace t-shirt that costs 900 bucks, but you're fat as fuck. Yeah. Which one do girls prefer the look of? The guy in the t-shirt that costs three dollars. Unanimous. No one cares. Business yeah. is always always wins. Yeah. Bro, um, well, go ahead. When I got into shape, bro, I stopped buying designer and like just left wearing a plain black tee. Perfect. Let me ask you this, Tristan. So for the guys out there that are watching, right? Yeah. What is the starter kit that they should get um, as far as like suits, shirts, colors, et cetera, shoes? There's what should, because obviously there's levels to it. You got to build yeah. your wardrobe up. So for the guys out there that are watching, how should they set it up? Because I think, and you know, you guys know I did my little photo show. I went through yeah. the photos with you guys. I'm going to post them on my Instagram, whatever. But you should have some photos of there of yourself in business attire because we know women universally want that. So yeah. what do you think guys should, if they're just starting out, they don't have anything, yeah. what should they get? Well, there are formulas to this, actually. People say, I think Steve Harvey did a video on this. Yes. Yeah. Saying, oh, you buy a burgundy and a, and a gray and a blue. Navy I blue remember and the video. And yeah. a tan. And uh, that was his formula. And you mix it around, et cetera. But however, Steve Harvey's talking as a black man and skin tone matters a lot does. with what you wear i have a yellow jacket it's a bright yellow jacket that i can wear and in this i look white as fuck now because i've been locked up in romania but i've got i've got a nice brown tan to me anywhere i'm in the sun yeah and uh you, you, you put that exact same yellow jacket on even a handsome friend of mine like justin waller he looks pink it makes his face look pink he looks like a weird baby face shape like you don't want to do that yeah so it also depends on your skin tone yeah and a bunch of other that's things. obviously but, um yeah I'd, I'd say for the summer get a white pants look get some get some white pants a shirt that's darker in color and a jacket that matches your skin tone with a pair of loafers wearing without socks i know americans wear socks with loafers i'm a, I'm a no sock guy because i'm a european that's what i would say for the summer and then for the winter you can't go wrong you cannot go wrong with just a all black suit black shirt black jacket black pants or burgundy shirt burgundy jacket burgundy pants yeah i, I wear those those looks a lot you don't need to be that guy because when you're when you're thinking let me buy these five different colors and i can mix and match and it makes 30 different outfits and stuff i don't know i just i just feel like having two or three nice suits is enough it yeah re it really is you don't need to combine it to make 30 40 different combinations yeah. buy what suits you but different things suit different people yeah you know a, a black man or a brown man can pull off a yellow jacket if you're white and got a bit of red on your face you can't wear a yellow jacket oh, or yeah. green or, or i will not got, go with yellow i mean Never. i've got dark green jackets i've got uh, you look like a nigerian Jamaica. green bro yeah oh, oh, I've, got, I've got white and pink stri striped jackets and pink is one of those colors and if you're small don't wear pink something makes you makes you look gay if you're big if you're six foot plus and you're wearing pink okay oh, you can pull point. it off it's, it's, it's a height thing also mm. yeah so what's the real formula we've probably got 30 40 000 people watching i can't tell them what it is yeah but um the most basic what i would say is google suits you like the look of 
and see if the model looks anything like you. Yeah. And you can literally print out a picture of a guy with black hair and white skin, for example, from a Hugo Boss model catalog, and look at the colors of the suit he's wearing, mm. and go into your local suit shop and buy the same color. Damn. You know it works, because Hugo Boss have obviously put the formula together for a model to wear on their fucking website. Mm -hmm. So you know that color combination isn't wrong. Navy blue, navy blue, I don't know, navy blue socks and brown shoes. That works. Yeah. And you know it, because you've seen it on Hugo Boss. They don't put around stupid combinations. They don't put them out there. And then just go to your local suit shop and buy the same fucking colors. Yeah. I think, no, I think, I think no you shame can't go it. wrong. I really like your... Because for all you guys out there, I think if you get a black suit and then a navy suit, you'll, you'll be fine, yeah. right? And then have at least one white shirt, Yes. one blue shirt, and that will probably carry you. And then as far as like ties go... If you want to be a little bit, you know, out there, you can wear a pink tie with the blue suit. That'll look good. Um, yellow or, you know, or if not, you can always go the American look. A nice red tie, red, white, and blue. Yep. You know, that could work as well. And then with the black, obviously, you know, a black tie would probably work with of that. We, you could get it with designs. And then, yeah, I like the white pants look as well because that signifies in, in the summer, um, wealth. In the, in, the summer, in the summer, I wear a lot of white pants. Yeah. White pants. And if you're on a boat, if you're on a yacht, it's got to be the white pants look. Yeah, it's got to be white it's pants. It's got to be. It's got to be white pants. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, don't, don't get too... And if you're not that into it, there are very basic setups you can get. Yeah. But then when you get super nerdy like me. So anyone who's bored, Google the Indian Prime Minister, right? The Indian Prime Minister... Yeah, I was go, good, me go, and you were talking about this yeah, other the day. Yeah, the Indian Prime right Minister... I saw the this. Prime Minister suit and it will come up. Mm -hmm. He has this blue suit. It's not the same cut that I'd get, but it's a blue suit. And it has 24 karat gold stripes run down it. So it's striped gold. But when you zoom in on the gold really this closely... Right here? Yeah, when you zoom in on the gold really closely, it reads his name up and down the suit. So you can see, you can see it here. Look, oh, sure. Fact, you know what? I share screen. I, yeah, let yeah. me, let me. Sh I'll pull yeah. it up right here. Yeah. So We're still rolling. Go ahead. Go ahead. Indian Prime Minister. So yeah. anyway, so anyway, that that material just I've just bought the material to make that suit. I haven't paid my tailor to make the suit yet, and the ten meters of material I had to order for the three piece suit I'm being made cost me thirty five thousand dollars. So Holy by the time shit. I get the suit made, I'm looking at fifty thousand dollars for the suit. It's right there. But so you could get really nerdy into this shit like I am. My my wardrobe's upwards of ha half a million. Put images. That, that picture yeah. on the left. That, the this one right here on the left. Okay. That's the, that's exactly. Okay. I, so hold on. Let me go ahead. I'm gonna yeah. share screen. Uh, share. So I'm, I'm getting a different cut. I'm having a classic English three piece suit made out of this same material, but it's gonna read Tristan Tate, Tristan Tate, Tristan Tate in twenty four karat gold. Mm. The suit is even heavy because the gold is 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 woven into it. I've got a green suit being made. It's a uh, there's a picture of me on my old Instagram because it was being manufactured. It's being... Uh, this here right here, guys. Yeah, it's going to be finished soon, but it's uh, it's got crushed jade stones in with the dark green of the material. Mm. So it's it's like kind of shiny and sparkly. Yeah, but I'm a nerd about this stuff now. Mm -hmm. So now it's something I'm really, really into. So you don't have to get as into it as me. You don't have to be as nerdy as me. I need to one out. Oh, what's it? No, no, no. When, what's the old picture? Put somewhere on Or pulling up some of your pictures? No, I can no, do no. that too for the people. No, 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 it doesn't matter. It's not on here. This is okay. on my Instagram. So wait, his name is in the gold? Yeah, so no, if no, you no. Zoom, zoom in. Zoom in, zoom in on the text. Zoom in on the text. All right, let me see if it'll let me. And you will see yeah, that's know. his first and last name run up and down oh, in well, micro layers. Right here. So this is Ditched it. in 24 karat gold. Yeah, now you, you can see it there. Oh, with his name embroidered all over it. Okay. Now you can see it, yeah. So my suit's going to read Tristan Tate, of course. Can I zoom in on But that material, just to buy the cloth, cost me $35,000. Holy. Wow. Yeah, just for, the, just for the cloth. The suit hasn't even been made yet. Okay. But well, I, this is a, like a kind of a hobby for you as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you enjoy it. You do it on but the I'm side. I'm nerdy about shit like that, and you don't yeah. need that. You don't need that because only a top of the line Savile Row suit dude is ever going to notice that and be like, "Oh, that's cool." No yeah. girl's going to give a fuck about that as yeah, opposed yeah. to a normal navy blue suit with stripes yeah. on it. Then I think starting out with a navy suit or a black suit will be fine, guys, and then kind of build your wardrobe from there. Mm -hmm. And then obviously get some bra get get some shoes, right? Loafers I like. You get some lace ups. Get some uh, uh, you know some shoes with a Mongol strap. But yeah. you know what's the most important? Yeah. Don't be a fucking geek. Because it's the man inside the suit. Yes, it's the man true. inside the suit. You give me a t-shirt and shorts, and you put some of these dorks who hate on me in a $25,000 suit, and watch who gets the women. Watch who gets the business contract. Watch who will pass any job interview. Me in my fucking shorts. Speaking. So rule number one, don't be a fucking geek. There's only so much truth I can speak in the public domain. To receive completely uncensored information from me, <laughs> join my completely free email list. My I can truth. sit here right now as a multimillionaire. I will email you every day lessons from a multimillionaire for free. All it's going to take is 13 seconds of your time, maybe 10% of the people watching will do it. And 90% will go, hey man, being broke sucks. Yet they do not join my completely free emailing list. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. 
speaking of women, obviously, uh, obviously speaking. Are we going to speak of women? This is the Fresh and Fit you, podcast. You outed me. You're going to you're gonna get me in trouble. No, I'm going to out you. So listen, guys. You guys know Andrew. You know Tristan. And obviously, Andrew's more outspoken, more out there. Mm-hmm. But Tristan Tate That's is what the I guy said. behind the scenes. He's the guy mo- making things happen. To be honest, yeah, Andrew is in the face, but uh, Tristan Tate is behind the scene, and they didn't don't give him credit for that. But for me, my uh, between the Tate brother, I prefer Tristan because he's polyvalent. Polyvalent means he do everything. He can he 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 speak, he's fashionable. He speak about this. He speak about this. He go here. So it's like in every in every topic you can speak about. I I mean both of them are the same, but I, I don't know. I just prefer Tristan. And at the same time, he is the ladies' man of the year. No, I'm, ladies man of the, I'm, I'm certainly ladies' man <laughs> of 2022. You know, it's been, it's, it's been a slow year, you know, jail. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, slow year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But well, I'm the ladies' man of most years. Maybe not this one. Maybe not this one. That's you, Walt. But I, I took over for now, but, you know, I'm black, so not too long. But uh, regardless, though, um, how does one become... A ladies man oh, obviously women women are everything yeah but how does one become a ladies man for themselves well it's simple you know what and it's super simple i don't think there are any tricks and there are any hacks to it if you were to ask men the same question if you wanted to give a woman advice hmm. on how to get attention from all the high value men in the world the answer would be be a virtuous super beautiful 10 out of 10 high value women so uh, a high value woman i don't think it's a trick because i don't try to get women i feel like i try to become the best version of myself i can be and then women will naturally come to you and that's as simple as that and i know it sounds easy it's actually the hardest answer in the world because it's the answer no one wants to hear fat chubby dudes will send super chats to people like justin waller and he'll get pissed off at them yeah because he's saying hey man how do i get women have you seen justin waller you think he tries to get <laughs> women chat. Yeah. You think yeah. he try? I hang around with him. You yeah. think he fucking tries? They're trying to get him. Yeah, we see why. That. Why? Because he's worked his entire life. He's in the fucking gym. He's a self-made millionaire. He's smart. He's witty. He's funny. The motherfucker can sing. Well, you're telling me that he needs? He knows some secret trick. He doesn't know any fucking tricks. He's just the man all the women want. So yeah, yeah. I mean, try to be the best version of yourself. It's as simple as that. Work out in the gym. Read something. Learn something. Become interesting. You know, become wealthy, of course, because the wealth comes with a fun lifestyle. Women love fun. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's why they like fast cars. That's why they like when you take nice vacations, because women love fun. And when you're that guy, you'll be surprised how easy it is. If you're sitting there lonely, if you're truly lonely and you can't get any women, I can't teach you anything. Mm -hmm. Because if you had the basics, you wouldn't be lonely. Yeah. You'd at least have some chick around in your house trying to make you soup and suck your dick, you know? Um. You know, we, we, you know, we talk about competency a lot, right? And, and Tristan, you're always one of my favorite people to talk to because uh, you don't give yourself enough credit for this shit, but you're one you of don't. the smartest people I know. Yeah. Like, legitimately one of the smartest people I know. You're a fucking encyclopedia, bro. And, you know, I know you don't want to come off as a nerd, and I'm airing this out a little bit, but we, me and you have had many conversations for hours, yeah. right? Fucking talking about history and, you know, all this crazy shit, man. To this day, I still sticks with me. Uh, when you told me about um, the Mongols, the reason why they won so much is because they lived off their horses. Yeah. Yeah, because, I didn't fucking know that shit. It, because each each Mongol man was already a ready-made soldier before he even had yeah. to learn. He didn't have to learn anything to become an effective part of the army. Yeah, yeah and then like, and then they lived off their horses, so they were yeah. able to like well, use one of their strategies. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. Let's see if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, a year and a half plus later. Yeah, yeah. So uh, literally, um, they uh, they would retreat when they were low on numbers. Yeah. Live off their horses for a bit, and then they'd come back and engage back in combat when the enemy yeah. least expected it well, because they didn't expect them to come back because they're like, oh, they got to run back for resources because yeah, they get food. Uh, yeah, and then with the Christian kingdoms, they fought in a very different way. So the first Christian kingdom that was invaded by the Mongols was the kingdom of Georgia. It's on the other side of the Black Sea. And they fought in the way that, let's form up our army and then have our fight and see who wins. The Mongols had no real concept of that. They go there and harass them and shoot them and kill them and just go away. So imagine you're a knight. You take off your fucking armor. You go to sleep. Oh, they're back again. <laughs> Shit, try and throw your shit back on. Like, it was, it was so disorganized. Yeah, I did tell you that yeah. yeah well done so well, that's, 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 that's accurate but like I did, like I'm in my head I'm like what the fuck like how do you know shit like that and and I say all that to say this because we're talking about women right yeah guys knowing shit like that being a smart person you can make it interesting even though it might be like nerdy like you guys would be surprised that like people say oh well girls are dumb blah 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 but if you're able to be a good storyteller and convey history in a certain way and apply it to the conversation that you're having etc you'd be surprised at how many women would actually be intrigued and interested like wow I didn't I didn't know that that's like a fun fact women are always interested in learning new stuff women are always interested in hearing new things that they find interesting and it always depends on the vehicle of delivery yes you know it's the vehicle of delivery 
if, if you're a little nerd who's like, oh, well, women should like me. I know lots of stuff. I read lots of books. Yeah, but you're a fucking little dork with a pencil Geek. neck. Women aren't interested in even sitting down next to you, yeah. let alone listening to anything that comes out of your mouth. If they think, mm, I might want to sleep with this guy, because you have to understand, before dates, before dates, especially when it's your third, fourth, fifth date, the, 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 the decision to sleep with you, go to bed with you, give you what you're after, is already made usually by women before you go. Yep. Yeah. So you just have to go out and freestyle it. If you're sitting there saying interesting stuff that she doesn't know, will she remember it? No. Will she talk about it with her friends? No. But they find things they don't know incredibly interesting. So yeah, become an interesting guy. Learn some shit. And most learn, importantly, learn things. You know, she might not remember that the Mongols would go back and you know, <laughs> fucking eat, live off their horses and then come back and attack the knights and they're over there. Oh. To be honest with you guys, I, I really don't care about history too much. <clears throat> I studied I studied in high school uh, the history of my country, but in the end of the day, I don't believe anything. Uh, I don't believe any word they said. They, they said about because most of the history is a lie. I had a I had a friend who was a teacher of history, and he was teaching in university. And he he told me all the things that we learn when you we go much deeper, deeper. They are all a lie. So I I don't know what to trust. And he was a a teacher of history, so he told me I don't know what to trust now. All the things that I learned, they. So that's why I don't trust. Fuck, I gotta put my armor back on and they're getting killed. But what she will remember is how she felt when you told that story and how you were able to convey it. Yeah. Matter of fact, today. So, so, so they, no, in fact, I'll dive into this a little bit as well. Please. Mm -hmm. This is, I think this is one of the key factors because I thought about this very recently. Because when I sit with my friends, we have some very, very interesting conversations. I had a, 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 a Dutch politician here the other day, Thierry Baudet, very famous dude, runs a very big political party in the Netherlands. And when you're seeing their talk, he stepped up and said it was bullshit yeah, when all that happened. I remember that. So he was here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 he was yeah. here. Uh, when I sit with Justin Muller, when I sit with you, when I sit with any man who's interesting and we're having these interesting conversations, if you're commanding. I wish you guys could hear some of the shit we talk about. Oh, it's amazing. But if you're commanding the respect and the attention of four or five other men who are worthy of admiration, that's what women like as well. If you're saying incre something incredibly interesting and me, who's worthy of respect, and Andrew and Justin Muller, are all sitting there staring at you kind of nodding their head because you're telling us something we don't know your girl will pick up on that your girl will pick up on that ah myron can command the respect of these other men who are all smart and rich and etc 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 and i think that's a big factor for them as well it's not necessarily them listening to you yeah. but when they see other men are interested in you and interested in what you have to say and you command respect in the hierarchy that's a very that's a massive turn on for women yeah and 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 guys like um, interesting enough, right? So, you know, mystery, right? I, I, I've, I've talked about his work a lot, and he, he talks about the power of storytelling, cadence, tonality, when you speak, uh, etc. in a certain way, you know, speaking in the active verse, voice versus the passive voice. People are able to pick up on that, and women respond very favorably to that. So even if you're telling a story that might be boring told by a historian, but you're an interesting person, you're able to tell that story, it can make it way more interesting, and they'll be like, oh my god, that's that's really cool, that's really interesting. And even a bimbo, that's stupid, if you tell the story correctly, can absolutely get appreciation from it. And, you know, learn something in the process, man, to help these dumb hoes become smarter, guys. Yeah, maybe, because yeah, yeah, there's plenty of bimbos who listen to plenty of stuff I said. I'm not sure they remember any of it, but... But they remember how you made them feel. And you know, actually, you know what's next, so... I know I've, I've heard on this podcast I've heard that sometimes you talk in a negative way about women so I might just join in a little bit <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna join in a little bit because fuck it I'm ready, I'm ready to go back to jail so let's be, let's be let's be a misogynist there was this girl I was meeting up some, some, <laughs> let's some, go some, some, some years ago some years ago and she was dull uninteresting there was nothing really special about her she was fucking 9 out of 10 though smoking hot yeah. but she was really really an uninteresting person and she said something to me that actually annoyed me I very rarely see red. I very rarely get angry. I very rarely get mad. But this girl was like, yeah, I don't know. I don't want, really want to meet up anymore. And she was like, oh, but come on. We have such a great time together. And I was just, I was bored. I was like, why? Why do you like hang out with me so much? And she said, we have such interesting conversations. And I was like, hold the fuck up. <laughs> we have interesting conversations. No, we have interesting conversations. We have interesting <laughs> conversations. Yeah. Me telling you shit is not me having an interesting conversation. <laughs> the fact that you can sit there and claim my knowledge of everything <laughs> as an interesting conversation because you sit there with your dumb f uh huh, uh -huh that's interesting. <laughs> you, that was not an interesting conversation. I was furious. Yeah. I was like, you know what? Now, nah, fuck it. You know, she got her own way there because I saw her a few more times after that. I was like, come here. Come here. <laughs> Write down everything you tell me tonight. <laughs>
Zero. Right. <laughs> Zero. Nothing. We have interesting conversations. I was offended. I was furious. <laughs> you never had an interesting so, conversation with her in my life. Back in school, right, I had a friend uh, who's from Turkey, actually. Really well-groomed guy, well-traveled. And he would ask us the question, where, where have you traveled to? They would say, oh, I've just been to, like, you know, Texas or, you know, maybe, mm -hmm. like, California. Oh, well, I've been to, you know, Romania. I've been to Texas. I'm so sorry. Uh, like, for example, European countries. Yeah. He tell a story that wasn't really true. But because they don't know the country, he's a like a fucking lie. Oh, and by the time he's done with the story, they're like, oh my God, that's amazing. He's like, you know, I went to the top of the mountain. I saved this, this lady from Burning House. And like, they're like, oh, <laughs> this is amazing. But he told the story in a, in a succinct, clear way that was really like very Engaging. vivid. Yeah. And they, they fell in love with the story. And before you know it, you smash them the same night. You know who yeah. falls for that? American chicks. Yeah. All the time, bro. They'll say shit to me like, oh, have you ever been to Paris? I'm like, oh, you should see it. <laughs> it's amazing. It's a fucking <laughs> shit. Oh, yeah. Paris it is it a sucks. dump. It's like, oh, you should see. No, I'll be there this summer. Yeah. Like, it's like, sucks. it's the mystery. Yeah. Paris sucks. They don't know anything. They don't know. They're never in the fucking Paris. I can't spell Paris. <laughs> Did you see the new Napoleon movie? Oh, my God. Is that? Were you, were you told to ask me this by any of my No, friends? no, 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 no. Mm. Uh, no, because, so... I am pissed. So, I was... Furious. So, check this out. Me, wow. me and my girl have been watching it, right? And mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm going to watch this, and I'm going to get with Tristan and see how historically accurate this thing was. Okay. Jesus, I... How much of the movie did I remember? I was drinking at the time. I also, <clears throat> I saw, I saw the uh, the trailer of Napoleon, but I didn't want to watch it because uh, I don't like anything French. Simple. Historically accurate. Nothing about racism. Just I don't like anything. Zero. Oh, even though so, I speak uh, the language. Well, what you have to understand is this. He has a book. There's a book called The Corsican. It's his own memoirs over the, over the years. Mm. His own Is writing. it better than Mein Kampf? And when you read... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just of, kidding. I'm of just kidding. course. Oh, oh, okay. He has a book. There's a book called The Corsican. It's his own memoirs over the, over the years. Mm. His own Is writing. it better than Mein Kampf? And when you read... Uh, <laughs> Mein Kampf is the book of Hitler. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Of, I'm just of kidding. course, that's a terrible book. <laughs> terrible book. <laughs> terrible book. Shoot me. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, Are you trying to get me in trouble? No, no, Are you trying to get me in bro, trouble? Bro, no, bro, bro. No, my bad. Let's yeah. move on. Let's yeah, move on. Yeah, anyway, yeah. the long story short is it, it's clearly <laughs> written by a hyper intellectual man. Yeah. He was a lover of science, he was a lover of everything, military strategy, etc. He wasn't a fucking man child, and reading his own words, you could tell that. So Joaquin Phoenix was obviously briefed to give this he was the Joker in a Napoleon outfit, essentially. Yeah. So the whole he's a man child, uh his wife has complete rule over him. Now, did his wife cheat on? him allegedly but he wasn't a man who was interested in his love life he was out conquering europe and this bitch just stayed in paris for years on end while he was going on campaign yeah um but to make him a man child i think was the most insulting thing and it's it's the basic premise of trying to you know the new bond movie the the new person with the 007 prefix is some black woman yeah oh God. keeping them keep in mind there are zero females in the british secret service who have the role of hairs and anywhere so it's, like, it's not true and it's dumb yeah trying to make napoleon a man child is one of the greatest men the single most successful general of all of human history by the way yeah mastered an entire era of warfare so before before napoleon there was sort what you refer to as uh sword and spear warfare cool there were some generals who did that alexander the great julius caesar etc mm -hmm. i'm gonna, I'm gonna ask yeah, you about him next yeah and then you had then you have modern warfare i mean post post world war one so we talk about the erwin rommels and the 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 montgomery's and the and the patents but that era of warfare the the fire in formation march in formation fire and you know the, using muskets and the early rifles is actually referred to as napoleonic war Warfare is the yeah. only man in all of human history to have an era of warfare named after him, even in parts of the world where he didn't even fight. It's called the Napoleonic Era of Warfare. So he was the best general ever. He was a very smart man. The fact that they made him a man child is the most insulting thing. But if you want to talk historical mistakes, one, he says, Oh, I conquered Italy without ever firing a single shot. His Italy campaign was massive. Massive. Loads of battles fought, loads of people died. Every single battle was badly uh, portrayed. At Waterloo, he charged the field himself and started stabbing people with the sword never happened they include little gems of his historical got blown truth. up not true no 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 not true they include little historical gems that are kind of true but they fuck them up mm -hmm. with bad cinematography and bad historical accuracy so at the beginning of the Battle of Waterloo, I'm gonna I can rant about this for about an hour. Please, so please, I don't want people the, to see the side of you because the, a lot of people yeah. don't know how. Uh, at the beginning of the Battle yeah, of Waterloo, please. there's a man with a scope aiming at Napoleon, saying, "Oh, I could take him out." And Arthur Wellesley says, "No, no, no, no. It's not the business of generals to be killing other generals." After 
after the battle actually happened, it was an artillery battery with cannons who said to Arthur Wellesley, we can, we can kill Napoleon. He said no. And so the line was true, but scopes hadn't been invented. Uh -huh. So it pissed me off that they, <laughs> they added the only scope in the movie at a time that scopes didn't exist mm. to put in a bit of historical truth under complete bullshit. The Battle of the Pyramids was a real battle. You know, it was fought nine miles from the pyramids. You could barely see them. He mm. named it the Battle of the Pyramids to give it a sexier name and sell it to the French public. Mm. And the people who made the movie obviously didn't fucking know that because the Battle of the Pyramids takes place at the fucking pyramids. Didn't happen. Um, I, 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 mean, I, I could go. I could go no, on please, and on. Please, I mean, Jesus, what else is wrong? I mean, the 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 first the first siege that he took part in he was actually wounded he was stabbed they left that part out they could have put that in as part of his origin story but um that that was uh, i guess accurate up until that point he was not at the beheading of uh, marie antoinette which i believe is the opening of the movie he was campaigning yes. he was campaigning in italy at the time he was not in paris at the time oh all sorts of mistakes they hit her with the guillotine yeah mm. all sorts of mistakes but i'll tell you the one part the one historical gem that they did actually sneak in there that was actually very good mm -hmm. and as black people and people of i mean you're black he's black i'm barely black but i'm still black i'm no, you black. Black, man. yeah i'm black black you're a nigga too man the one cool detail they snuck in was that general of his who was a black man mm. there's a black general standing next to him now that general wasn't actually in fact with him in egypt like he was in the movie but that was a very real person he was called what they had a sick nick they had a sick nickname for him he was called like the black death was he a haitian or no no he uh yeah, darkness yeah uh what, 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 what race is creole i think yeah, he, was haitian. Haitian. Yeah. he was haitian yeah so he was he was haitian and you've all heard of books like uh the three musketeers yeah and yes. the count of monte cristo these are famous mm -hmm. books written by an author who was half black named alexander dumas he was a mixed yeah. race guy alexander who wrote dumas those books is French. his father thomas alexander dumas was a general in napoleon's <laughs> army and he was the only black general in napoleon's army so the black character in the movies who is black and is one of the generals although they don't name him it's a so alexander dumas was black to someone like me that that was thomas alexander dumas it was very cool of them to add that detail into the movie yeah in a day and age and where they not. make white characters black and other characters with the wrong races to put him in the movie but here's the thing that movie was so poorly made and so badly researched, they may have just put a black dude in there for, for, <laughs> for DEI. For, de for DEI and yeah. accidentally nailed the coolest detail of the movie. Yeah. You know? That, but do I really... Because I didn't fucking name the guy, but... To me, that represents a real person. I thought that was pretty cool of them to put that in. Okay. But, so that's the one good detail about... Now, I got to ask you about this because I'm going somewhere with this, well, right? Alexander the Great. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, with... with, uh, with how, how was that portrayed? Was that accurate? Netflix. I mean, obviously, they covered... So, the, they really highlighted the, the gay stuff. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see it. Keep well, in mind. I did not... I watched the movie a long time ago of Alexander the Great, but it was a long time ago, and I was still... Maybe... I was maybe... 13, 14. It was a long, long time ago. So I think I'm going to rewatch it. Uh, after this, I'm going to rewatch it to see what he's going to speak about it right now. See it, but it is very well understood that Alexander the Great had male lovers. Mm -hmm. It's very well understood because. Alexander the Great isn't one of these figures of myth and legend that stories about him were written way after he died or, or come from historians who like write stories about per the person who they never even met. Uh, Alexander the Great's entire history was written by a man named Ptolemy. After, his, after he died, his five strongest generals broke up his empire into different parts. So Ptolemy in Egypt, well, the, the lineage eventually gave rise to Cleopatra, which is why Cleopatra shouldn't be black, by the way, because she was Greek. Um, Ptolemy was one of his generals and one of his best friends and the entire history of Alexander the Great was written by a guy who was on a We know that Cleopatra is not black. <clears throat> yeah, we all know that. Campaigns they can put her in a movie like they feel, but we all know that. Numbers. So, did Alexander the Great reason for that? Like, did he? Well, why, was it like? A, well, in ancient Greek culture, uh, homosexuality before the rise of Christianity was seen different. And it worked in a very different way. Okay. So it worked in a very different way when... Um, Wait, the, so no, then... No, no, no. I mean, it worked in the same way. The mechanics, I'm sure you probably know more about this than me. But, <laughs> wait, 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 let me get this straight. That nigga was gay? <laughs> Alexander the Great, yeah. Alexander the Great had sex with men. And it's, wi it's widely accepted. I know people are like, oh, they shouldn't have made a big deal about it. But oh, I didn't know that. This is a brand new information for me. That Alexander the Great was gay. I didn't know that. Okay, maybe he wasn't gay, but he was bi. So it's like he enjoyed both. 
I'm gonna rewatch the movie because it was a long time ago and I was still a kid. I don't know. I, I don't even know what his game mean. But look, if you hate historical historical inaccuracies and you like things being portrayed accurately, I hate the fact that Cleopatra was black because she wasn't black. I hate when they do this shit. Denzel Washington is allegedly going to play Hannibal of Carthage, which annoys me because oh, what the fuck? Well, he doesn't look Tunisian. And plus, Hannibal was like 29. Yeah. You can't have a 75-year-old, 70-year-old black man <laughs> playing a 29-year-old Tunisian man. It annoys me. Hannibal you was can't Tunisian. get mad at the fact that they made Alexander the Great gay because he he was widely understood to have had wives, etc., and also male lovers. But ancient Greek was a very weird place when it came to homosexuality because the Christian doctrine and the Muslim doctrines that all came way after ancient Greece demonized the homosexuality in a way but homosexuality in ancient Greece was actually practiced in a very different way you know who the most feared warriors in ancient Greece were you're gonna say the Spartans aren't you yeah the Spartans yeah. lost several prominent battles to a city-state called Argos look this up and Argos's most scary soldiers were called the sacred band of Argos why why this guy know this kind of information? You see what I said in the beginning. He he, he keep it like uh, you th you think he 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 does. He's not well educated or something like this because we we all know the face of the Tate is Andrew Tate. But after that, he's the guy. Tristan is the guy behind the store, uh, behind the um, the scene. So you see all the information that he has. So that's what I'm saying. You can take some info from it. Take it. Remember. Remember it, use it like he said, use it. I don't know what you, you're going to use it with who, but use it anyway. Argos, In a conversation. And Argos's most scary soldiers were called the Sacred Band of Argos. And they were gay lovers, homosexual lovers. They'd pair them up and they'd have these units where every single man was fighting next to his lover because they assumed that it was going to inspire them to fight harder and to not turn their back and to not be cowards because they were next to their lover. So oh, homosexuality shit. was not feminine back then. Okay. It was masculine. It's still gay, and I'm still as a Christian against it. Yeah. But ancient Greeks saw it an entire different way. I see. So okay. some of the some of the battles And this is before the, the, the religions of the book. Way before. Well, way before. Way before. The audience way before. So, so, so Argos actually had specific military units so they once had a battle look this up look this up uh, uh, tell me if i'm wrong i, I can't remember it's 400 and something 400 is around the marathon was 420 no no the battle of the champions okay. look up the battle of the champions in the battle of the champions sparta and argos decided that they weren't going to waste all their soldiers going to war with each other so they nominated 300 soldiers each to fight each other and they met in the middle of a field and they made this deal they said look we're going to march off and leave our 300 dudes here each. battle of the 300 champions yeah that's yeah. it 504 bc 504 bc 546 bc argos versus sparta correct yeah, yeah. So, so anyway so they said well we're going to meet back here tomorrow and whoever's left on the field is going to be the winner. So these 300 homosexuals, because they were the sacred band of Argos, fought okay. against 300 Spartan hoplites, and the the result was controversial. But the but the people from Argos, the homosexuals, beat the Spartans. Wow. So what happened was this. So but it all this is I don't even know why I'm digressing into this. But <laughs> essentially, what happened was. Both men fought, or both sides fought, till there were two men from Argos left, and all the Spartans were dead. And the two men from Argos went back to their camp and said, look, we've killed all the Spartans, it's fine, we've won. Both armies meet there the next morning, and there's one Spartan standing in the middle of the field, badly wounded. Yeah. He obviously stood up after the battle. Yeah. And Argos was like, yeah, we won, we killed all your dudes, we came back and we've been celebrating all night. And Sparta was like, ah, that's not the deal, though. The deal was who's here on the field the next morning. Oh. And they ended up having a full-scale battle anyway. <laughs> so, uh, but essentially, yeah, okay, <laughs> give us your 300 best men. Okay, these 300 homosexual lovers are going to fight 300 Spartans, and they and they won. Yeah. So the, the homosexuality wasn't feminine back yeah. then, you know? It was, it so, was a, it was to me, to me, it looks like a, it was a unifying factor. It was a very different culture, and yeah. it's a culture that's now dead. Yeah. And even as someone who's against the LGBTQ movement and indoctrination, all the stuff that I talk about against, to sum up, Alexander the Great had male lovers. Yeah. He did. Get over it. You don't like seeing it in your movies. Don't watch about Alexander the Great then. Don't watch about Alan Turing, the fucking guy who broke the German Enigma code. He was a homosexual. Don't watch movies about him if you don't like the fact that he was gay. Now let me Shut ask up. this. Very interesting, by the way, that they, they the gay dudes were great uh, warriors. Well, they didn't have to deal with women, right? So they, they could focus on, you know, just killing people. Uh, just like gay dudes make a lot of money, just right? Just like Jeff, Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> dude, one of the one of the most efficient serial killers, right? He just went after gay dudes. Yeah, exactly. Um, no women in his life to stress him out. Yeah, yeah, nothing. He was just no. chilling. Yeah, just having a great time. Yeah, you know, and he turned it off for a bit. Like from 1975, he didn't kill anybody okay. for a bit. Okay. So <laughs> real, real quick, this is right? really gay. Yeah. Well, hold on. We're history, fresh. Come on, man. All right. Um, gay so, history. Um, so that's Alexander the Great. I say all this to say this. Deception is a prerequisite to your enslavement. To truly resist the slave mind, join my completely free email. I find it interesting that they took Napoleon, great mm -hmm. conqueror, and then they take Alexander Great, another great conqueror, and what do they highlight? The, the you know the the, the infantile the, the you know the short man syndrome. Yeah. Napoleon oh, he was gay, by the way. Yeah. Because what do women say when they attack your masculinity? Small dick energy. Exactly. You're gay. They immediately attack your sexuality, and I found it very interesting that with two great conquerors, what did they highlight? Obviously, you know the Alexander the Great gay yeah. thing, which I you know, seen it. you know, they highlighted that. Yeah. Right, to, for, to, to push his LGBTQ, uh, you know, community. And then with the Napoleon thing, let's make this guy look like a fucking idiot but and not as competent. Yeah, that's a straight up lie. And also, short man syndrome, Napoleon wasn't short. Yeah. Napoleon was Napoleon. above. He was a, he, I think he was five foot seven, which was above average height in France at the time. Oh, oh wow. Shit. It was above average that. height in France at the time, but the, the British cartoonists drew him as a little angry man. So Napoleon syndrome, short man syndrome, he wasn't short. He wasn't below average height. Okay. For that so, time. Yeah, for that time. So that's a myth. Five foot seven is a bit short today, but yeah. back then, that back was, then, that yeah. was, that was people, above. People aren't, the malnutrition yeah. was that, rampant, that was, yeah. scurvy. Yeah, that was, but that was above the height of the average Frenchman. So Napoleon wasn't actually short. And the real Napoleon is such a badass. I mean, you like him like I do. You can't watch that movie. Okay. You can't watch it. It's so I find it interesting that they took two great conquerors and made them look fucking crazy. That yeah. was my point here well, with I, mainstream I, media. I, I'd like to see the Alexander the Great thing because one of the arguments, because I haven't seen it, Mm. And I said, well, he was a homosexual. Someone said, yeah, but eight minutes in, he's like making out with dudes. And I'm like, okay, you don't have to. Maybe they're yeah. trying to force it in everyone's face. Yeah, yeah. But uh, wait till like episode yeah. nine or some shit. Exactly. But it, it, but it certainly was a detail of his life. Yeah. And you can't you can't erase it. Yeah. So yeah. knowing all that. Oh, okay, so Alexander the Great is a series. I don't remember it. Uh, I didn't watch it then. I watched only the movie. I didn't watch the series though. It was a gay t gay fest back in the day. Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah, well, so Sodom and Gomorrah isn't a verifiably historical place. The Sodom and Gomorrah appears in the Torah and the Bible and the, I think the Quran as well. They who, 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 who knows? They, Was it a sin-filled city that God decided to destroy with meteors well, and fire and brimstone and stuff? I, 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 I'm pretty sure no historical source in terms of modern-day archaeology has ever said, this is Sodom and Gomorrah we found. They found artifacts. No, they've, they found that, that were... Definitely charred from way back then that they found underground. They found it. They probably have in, in lots of places in the world, though. Yeah. And uh, I don't. I don't know that much. I know the biblical version of Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah. I know. I know that. I know the story. I know the story, of course. But I don't think that there's a consensus that it was here. This was the place, and this is what happened. I don't think that level of evidence has come up. It came out. So, well, but maybe it has. And maybe you're right. I what you said earlier. It was. It was that gay. It should have burned. So makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, still got some chats here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Tyson Hawkley <laughs> says we're going down the rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we did. We did. Yeah. But some good history stuff. God bless you, Tristan and FNF, for being a great influence on people. My biggest goal this year is to have Tristan and Andrew on my podcast. I just had Dylan Madden on recently. Okay, it's Tyson. Good. Good luck to you. What I would That's say is, um, if it's on YouTube, no. Mm -hmm. If you're on Rumble and you have more than a hundred thousand subs, I'll do it. Wow. There you go. There you There's go. Some yeah. name, some name for, but fuck YouTube now. Yeah. Live in reality. Two four seven says Tristan. How much do you read? What have been the best three books you've read, read recently? Recently, um, I like a lot of books. I like. I mean, I, I read. I do a lot of audio books when I'm driving because I'm not a big music guy. Uh, yeah, music I'm, is gay. If, if I'm I remember we talked about that on yeah. Twitter. How like listening to music is a waste of time. Yeah, I don't listen to music. I listen yeah. to audio books. So that I get yeah. through a lot of my books. Unless you're in way. the gym or something. Now I'm not so much reading. I'm trying to learn Russian. So I'm going through Russian books and trying to read in their alphabet and trying to get my knowledge up that way. So I'm not reading any 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 books. Um, best three books I've read recently. Or in the past. In the past, um, I'm halfway through the Amber Nectar, the life of the Prophet Muhammad. There's no good audiobook version of that. I spoke to my friends about that, about like recording a good one because the audiobook version of it is shit. Mm. Shitty audio, shitty microphone, terrible. Um, that uh, for for us as a Muslim, uh, the best story of a, uh, of of 
can be in the in the for us as a muslim i'm saying like uh, it's the, the story of the prophet you can read it you can check it up and you go you're going to see how the prophet was an extraordinary human beings and um, just look it up because uh, me i uh, it's obviously i i i i read i i check about the prophet but you i take like this this guy gives story like this and i take this and i take this and i didn't find like just a story who speak directly about him and we watched the movie also but the movie is also cut into parts there is part of true but there is cut in of part they don't give everything so i take this i take this i take this and i recommend everyone to to learn, to study how the prophet was that's, that's very interesting. I'm halfway through that. I'm uh, A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. I read after getting out of jail, and that's the kind of book that you'll read and be like, shit, someone's always got it worse because it's just a tragedy. No wonder that guy fucking blew his brains out if that's, if that's the kind of book he was writing. And um, what else have I read this year in particular? I like the classics, man. I, li I, like, I like Dracula. I like The Count of Monte Cristo. I like the, the original 12 Ian Fleming James Bond books. I like those in terms of fiction, but I just read books about history yeah. when I get time. I, yeah. I read books about him. Yeah. Roy Jenkins is very good. Anything by Roy, Roy Jenkins and anybody he writes about is, is very good history-wise. Awesome. Uncle Luke says, shout out to my boys at FNF in Romania. Glad to see you're having a great time with the Tates. Will you have a panel of beautiful Romanian women on the podcast tonight? No. 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 no, I no. can I can make some phone calls, but right now with you know all yeah. the federal investigators yeah. watching my house, probably not the right move. Yeah. Probably not the right move. But, my, but they will be in Miami and we'll do it in the few, uh, after. All yeah. But we will have a panel, maybe in in next, London next spot. Yeah. Yeah. Monday. Cool. Monday night. Tune in. Good. If you need girls for London, London, the panel, call me. I know. I know one or two. Okay. One or two. You know the whole <laughs> one or two. <laughs> I used to live in London. Of course, I'm, of course, I'm under. I'm downplaying. Bears Lair says, CEO Network. Shout out to you guys. Shout out to your brother. Uh, Durag Myron says, Myron, if you smoke this time, you have to clip the cigar, bruv. Last they night, I did clip it. You kept trying to light it. They noticed they it. Damn. They, yeah. they noticed it. <laughs> they were yeah. like, I thought, I thought it was clipped. I've seen the comments. Listen, nah. I gave it to him. He did it for me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I thought back. it was clipped when you gave it to me. <laughs> okay. Shit. Okay. Yeah, they're on to you. Yeah, yeah, god damn. They know it's that. I saw the uh, comment section. Juggernaut. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Please, guys. Rumble's not available in Romania for Android phones. If one of you, FNF or Tristan, could speak to Rumble staff, I'd be forever grateful, and not only me. It's it's spreading. It's spreading. It will be it will be available in more countries soon. That's something that they're pushing every single day. Yeah. Scott says, please unban me from commenting on Andrew Tate's Rumble channel. Scott? No, you were banned for a reason, so no. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> we didn't ban you for no reason, exactly. so whatever you said, you deserve it. Probably spamming. Yeah. Dem Boy says, legendary collab, full circle, and fresh. Please let Myron and the chat come on, dude. Don't practice now, lol. And Myron, how do you feel that your cuck friend told his uh, community to attack your chat for clips? What? I, I, think, he, I think he means a uh, S. I don't believe you. Whatever. I don't believe that. Nabson says, we need a tape for president t-shirt i agree yeah, yeah no that will get me shot don't don't wear that t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> don't wear that t-shirt me or andrew will get smoked if they thought we had any political, Actually, political that's, ambitions that's and and b quite frankly i don't so i'm not trying to be president of anywhere that's a good point yeah. christy says tristan single mom here my teen sons my nephews and i watch you every single day for years they are jujitsu football and basketball champs and lead bible study in school love you so much well, that's good. That's good. I guess we're having a positive impact on those young men. So make sure they keep watching me. And, um, you know, being a single mom isn't easy. You're clearly doing a good job if they're into all that stuff and not, you know, video games, porn, and and, yeah, uh, shout out to the, and, the, and, the, and the Napoleon movie. See, you know, we make fun of single moms and everything else like yeah. that, right? Ha, ha, ha. But there's a, some smart ones that actually, like, have them watch this kind of content because they understand I can't teach a man to be a man. Exactly. Yeah. And you know what? You know what? I, I've, I've defended this several times before because there are some universal views that a lot of the red pill community have. And people put me in the red pill community. They put me in the conservative. I don't, I don't think – I don't name myself as part of any community. I say mm -hmm. what I think and I, I, I think what I say. Yeah. And that's it. I'm me. Um, the world is complicated and the world is tragic and relationships don't always work out and shit happens and people die and men are abusive and men are pieces of shit of course you can't i when you look at single moms with two or three kids who are still trying to live the whole life still trying to get a guy like me to take them seriously to take care of the kids you can look down on that kind of behavior and i would wholly agree with that however there are loads of great single moms in the world i mean my parents got divorced when i was widows yeah and my parents got divorced when i was probably 10 11 was when the divorce was finalized so my mom was a single mom was i raised okay yeah, i was raised brilliantly and then she ended up after raising her kids getting married and now she's married to the love of her life mm. so you know do, do i think her now husband should have looked back what eight nine years ago when he met her and said single mom 
just like actually grow up because the world's more complicated and it's not all black of and course white, and there's not one rule that fits all so don't be so hard on single mothers there's a gray area that's uh, actually true they love clyde says as a fellow little brother shout out to tusman tate tristan tate shout out to you that's uh, Don DeMarco, 100 bucks. IRS says, keep up the great work, gen gentlemen. The world needs to see this. If there's no struggle, there's no progress. IRS again, 100 sure. bucks. Uh, Tony Klein says, when do you guys believe the money Monday about cars will happen? Next Monday? Next Monday? After we get back from uh, uh, yeah, England? Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, do one yeah. for you guys. Yeah. Um, you guys mentioned the last latest business credit card podcast. You're planning this estimate date. So next Probably Monday. the one after that. Yeah. So there you go. Next next, next Monday. And then we'll go uh, 100 up from here. Uh, we'll read these ones that came through. But And the last one, Fidel says, what do you think about El Salvador? El Salvador. He spelled El Salvador wrong. Yeah, with a C. Yeah, he well, so he can't spell. Well, El Salvador is a very interesting case study. El Salvador is, um, you know, I was speaking about El Salvador. I'll, I'll, I guess if you're from El Salvador, I'll answer your question and, and give some credit to your president because some new guy came along. And, you know, they protected Assange, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, that was that was um, that wasn't El Salvador. That was uh, Ecuador. Ecuador. Ecuador? I, th God, was, I think it was in the Ecuador. Yeah, he, was he, in the he Ecuador. lived there for like seven years or something like that. And the, con and the consulate in London. Yeah, I think that was the Ecuador. Okay. Car consulate. I, I believe so. My double, bad. Double check that for yeah. me. But um, El Salvador. Yeah. So El Salvador, for those of you who are watching who don't know this, recently got a new president. And this new president was sick of his country being run by gangs, was sick of, sick of his country being flooded with drugs, was sick of his country being known for criminality. And he Ecuador. My bad. Ecuador. Yeah. yeah, it was Ecuador. You were correct. And he just started rounding these motherfuckers up. You got a gang tattoo? Fuck you. Guilty. Rounded them all up and put them in jail. And I'm going to say something that might get me in trouble. This is why I'm glad this show isn't on YouTube. <laughs> Rounding people up, right, mm -hmm. has been given a bad name. The Stalins, the Hitlers, the British Empire in South Africa with the Boers. Rounding people up was the beginning of so many tragedies in history that people, you know, look back on and, and hate. That nowadays, no politician could start a sentence with, well, we need to round them up and then, no matter how humane the solution. So El Salvador's president thought, fuck this, I'm rounding them all up. Yeah. Rounding them up. You're a gangster? Cool. Check it. Strip naked. You got a tattoo? Fuck you. Mm. Five years. Here's a, here's a here's a book. Educate MS yourself. MS thirteen yeah. probably. Yeah, let's let's yeah. let's round them all up. And the country's crime statistics absolutely transformed. Its economy absolutely transformed. <laughs> Drugs plummeted to near zero. Like he just rounded them all up. And when problems get that bad, you do get to a point where sensible politicians need to say the words, round them up, and then. For example, how do you fix California's homeless crisis? Ooh. Like, that's a very difficult question. Giving the money isn't going to help. They like being on the streets, most of them. Drugs are fucking everywhere and because the border's open and drugs are being flooded in. These people are drug addicts and crack addicts, etc. cetera. The, the solution, whether you like it or not, and I'm not advocating for anything violent against anyone, but the solution starts with round them mm. up. Mm -hmm. and then yep. but no politician in america has the balls to say the words round them up yep. because it's scary oh there's too many illegal immigrants are flooded into uh, america what do we do well round them up yeah and then process them and get them back to where they should be but you know the saying round them up makes everyone shit themselves so god bless the president of el salvador because he just fucking went for it yeah and he's cleaned up his country entirely yeah so good for him because he wasn't afraid to break that taboo and just start rounding these motherfuckers up you want to be a gangster cool come with me there you go yep absolutely man yeah so yeah guys uh we did one hour of tristan tate with uh fresh and fit podcast so uh we're gonna uh, do the other hour in not now but uh, another time we're gonna put it as part two we have other couple reaction coming also we're gonna put uh, the second part I'm going to drop this first uh, but uh, so thank you guys for uh, for watching and um, make sure to check the store i have uh, as i said before i have cool new design i'm going to put them in the link in the description and also i'm going to put the videos there to see what i have as a design and i'm dropping every day new design so you just make sure to check it every day because every day is something new and make sure to purchase from, from there as a support for us, guys. And if you will want like to see something on a t-shirt, just send it to me on Instagram and I will make it in a t-shirt with a design and send it to you. Hopefully, you're going to enjoy it. So thank you, guys, and see you for another reaction. Peace.